Hello and welcome to everybody who is joining our webinar, the CFO's 2024 Toolkit. Um, we will just wait a minute or so for people to come in. The Zoom can be a bit slow letting everyone through the door. Um, but while you're joining, it will be great. This is my favourite question at the moment. Um, if you can let me know where you're joining from and if you have already put your Christmas tree up ready for Christmas. I'm joining in from Sydney, actually, Katie. Nice. Do you have your Do you have your Chrissy tree up already, Jesse? <laughs> I do. I I love a bit of Christmas. Love a bit of love a bit of Christmas. It's coming up to summer. Can't complain. Yeah. yeah, I think we've gone we've gone minimalist Christmas tree, which doesn't feel very festive, but it's it's pretty much a few sticks with a bit of tinsel. <laughs> It's going to be maximalist. It's going to be <laughs> grandoir. It's Christmas. Everyone loves the, the big presents and the. True, true. Yeah, we'll get a few presents, buy some sticks. It just doesn't doesn't ring the same. Uh, so we've got Ganesh does not have his tree up, but Wayne does. No Chrissy tree. Yeah, it's always a tough one when you're going away. Is it worth putting it up for the the few weeks that you're there and then having to deal with it when you come back from holidays? Probably not. Ooh. Love it. We've got Wayne, Cara, the Lethal. Beautiful. That's what we nice want to see. Up. Trees up. That's the way. <laughs> Some of the questions are, have you started getting into the uh, the Christmas movies? You know, if you've got any uh, <laughs> any young kids, you know, there's there's always um, a couple out there. I think my favourite might be um, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. That's an absolute classic. Grandkids, grandkids up. Yeah, trees up. Love it. Everyone's getting amongst it. How good. Yeah, it's always great getting the, the kids involved, putting it up. It's tough when it's left to left to one person. <laughs> All righty. Oh, cool. Actually, good one. Sorry. Good good <laughs> suggestion from Wayne in there. A classic. Another classic. Yeah. Go, okay. <laughs> actually. Um all right. In the interest of time, we'll kick off and let people trickle in as we um, continue. Um, but welcome to today's webinar, the CFO's 2024 Toolkit. Um, we can go to the next slide. There we go. Um, so a bit of what we're going to be covering. Oh, sorry. Next slide. Next slide. So um, introductions from um, Jesse and myself. So I'm Katie. I work in the marketing team um, here at Wheel, and I'm joined by Jesse. Jesse's our wonderful customer success uh, manager, who's going to actually be taking you through most of today's session. I'm kind of just here as a bit of rah rah and to help um, answer any questions along the way. If we jump to the next slide, um, we've got a bit of housekeeping. So it's going to go for roughly 30 minutes. Um, the session will be recorded and shared with you afterwards. If you have to jump off a few minutes early, you will get a copy. Or if um, you know, you've got a colleague that missed that's missed it, we will be sending this out afterwards. Um, we also, as always with Zoom, we have that little nice Q&A function, which is, um, for me, it's about in the middle of my toolbar down the bottom. So if you have any questions, pop them in there because we will either answer them as we go or we'll save them for the end. Sometimes they can get missed when you drop them in the chat. So the Q&A is always best for questions, but Always the chat's great if you have any thoughts as we're talking or, or musings of anything we're covering at the time. Cool. So without further ado, I will now hand over to Jesse to, to kick off. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Um, look, thanks everyone for sharing your time today. It's a bit of a background on me. I started off in public practice. I have had a bit of a journey towards um, technology. Um, it always felt right for myself. Um, I went through an acquisition process. I worked at zero. For, for quite a few years. Um, so I guess where that leads me to talking about is, you know, starting off as a cadet accountant, seeing the, the progression to the cloud, I've seen different waves um, of, you know, different iterations of software. And if you think about the traditional ways that uh, it, it might have progressed early on, you know, we had pen and paper, um, which was where traditionally we were doing work. Um, as we start to get personal computers, we get desktop uh, softwares to start to manage our finances. Um, from there, we start to have the cloud revolution. And I remember very clearly um, when I first started in, in accounting, there was a lot of conversation about whether cloud would actually be fruitful. There was security concerns. 
throughout the whole time that I've seen these different waves, I've seen a couple of things. I've seen one um, expansions of different markets based off technology and, and early adopters. So there's definitely revenue to be made there. Um, but I've also seen, um, you know, a lot of different firms, whether it be practice, whether it be, you know, commercial accounting, use a lot of the tools that they had because it was there, you know, it was the best at our um, availability. I find it, you know, often the times when you question why we do a particular process, and it's always a good question to ask, why do we do it this way? If the answer is we've always done it that way, you might need to, to reevaluate why we actually do it in the first place and whether there are better options. But that's the journey of the finance app marketplace. You know, once we get to the cloud, we had this really amazing invention of the one ledger. You know, we had accountants working in with businesses. Um, we were able to do all of our, our work in the cloud pretty much from anywhere. What did that mean, though? It meant that uh, with the technology, it lent itself to a lot of different apps popping up to plug some of the gaps of softwares. Zero be the first to admit it. You know, they, they love to have this ecosystem of really innovative tools that serve their purpose. Okay. One of the things that we did see, though, is we have a lot of problems. You know, there are different gaps within how we work. Um, the, the marketplace, you know, notwithstanding, is a great tool. Um, but with all these different apps, we start to focus our time in different areas all of the time. And really what it came down to is the design of technologies, the compute, computing processes and power that we had at the time didn't really lend itself to more all-in-one technologies. So as you can see from this, this graphic here, you have your, your central accounting software. You've got your cloud marketplace with a, a number of tools that feed through um, that, that emerged. And then we had our traditional tools. You know, we had the, the existing payment facilities, Excel, no matter how hard uh, people push, sometimes you just think Excel's never going to get ripped out. It's that powerful. It's that it's that good. Um, but there are different ways we can use these these existing tools. So if we move into the next stage of um, what that would actually translate to from a a workflow process, it looked a bit like a, a dog's breakfast. You know, we've got a lot of different processes everywhere. You know. Um, let's say someone uploads an expense report and they need to get an invoice paid. First off, they might upload it. Then they go send an email to someone to get approval, to get it paid. Then we have a long email chain of back and forth with the approving manager. Does this need to get paid? Are we going to process it and send it across into our Slack, our teams? Um, you know, with the expense reports, who's following up on these individuals? What tool do we use to follow up on that? Where do we centralize? Where do we pick up these tax invoices? Um, how are we managing and getting our cards? You know, typically it's going to take, you know, four to six weeks potentially to get some of those cards issued to new starters by that time. You know, maybe that individual says, look, I can't be out of pocket. I don't want to be in this culture. I want to be part of a, a new, uh, more more sort of bleeding edge culture. And they might leave. Then you've got a card that sits there doing nothing. So there's a lot of different processes that we think about here that, yes, at the time, this, this wave of moving to the cloud, it opened up exponential ideas of how we can create efficiencies and you know automate processes to a higher degree and really what it came down to is these tools were generally better at getting to the right outcome or giving you a, a figure than is any way manually processed now what we've got to think about is all of our time all of our processes dedicated to learning these different systems it does translate to a bit of a, a gap in how we can run efficiently. And that's what I want to circle back to as well, is we may have been on the front edge of adopting cloud tools, but now we might have a system that looks just a bit out of place. And we need to reevaluate and, and start to, to think about what we need to do to, to bring them under one roof. Now, obviously, I think that Wheels is a terrific program 
that, that does that. And I will be talking a bit to Wheel today, but I want to talk broadly on that as well. You know, how do we go through that thought process? I mentioned one of the questions that you might ask yourself is why do we do this? As I said, if the answer is we've always done it this way, we've got to get out of that trap. So let's take a look at how you can think about how a tool like Wheel might feed into that and the questions you might ask yourself and and how you can think about you know how an all-in-one tool looks like and the benefits so this is your life after wheel thinking about your approval processes it's all in one place it's all managed in one place you've got delegated authorities the only thing that needs to happen is someone just needs to make the request the trigger just needs to be pulled and then it goes off you know we don't need to go through 50 different communication channels. You've got enough on your plate throughout the day to, to worry about that. Um, from there to setting up cards, you know, we got a centralized area that we can see all the spend in one place. Um, we can set limits on individuals. Um, we can understand the drop of a hat, how much has been spent and where it's been spent. Collect the tax invoices. We don't need to jump into a different tool system to see that outflow of cash we're managing our personal reimbursements from inside wheel again feeding into the approvals centralized um spoke of the wheel but we don't need to manage our cards separately to our personal reimbursements um bill payments another really good example these are all the outflows of cash that we can condense under one roof um, subscription management, also an area for us to start to evaluate how we can better manage it. Just because we had those traditional tools in the past doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's, it's the way that it needs to be moving forward. Um, and what we think about from this perspective is there is always different answers to different problems, you know? How we treated subscription management in the past, potentially through Excel and understanding what we had paid for, you know, maybe we need to evaluate the tools to see what else is out there. Because I guarantee you, if you've got over 10 to 20 subscriptions on one card and fraud hits that one card, you're in a pickle. You're in a pickle because those 20 services could be cancelled without, um, without your knowledge. So what's the main point? The main point is when we start to bundle up different areas of the finance division, there are emerging apps that start to condense them in an all-in-one functionality. Um, and again, it just comes back down to the progression. The next progression from the cloud might be to see that generative AI as well. So it's something to keep, keep in mind, how do we keep on the front foot of that and make sure we're using our time effectively. So um, thinking about company cards, um, Wheels that all-in-one uh, financial stack. With your payment types, um, how's it going to work? Instead of, you know, um, going through traditional systems, we can set up budgets with predetermined limits. We can start to have uh, divisional costs broken down and, and see that at a glance. Um, and the benefit from an all-in-one perspective is really that uh, we can start to, to condense our processes in one place. You know, you're not approving from different areas. If someone needs a top up, you don't need to go back and forth with them. Um, we can limit our spend. We can block cards from, from being able to be used if they haven't uploaded their compliance details. You know, what's, what's that going to translate to? It means that we're actually instilling a culture of spend management, you know, cards and the responsibility of expense reports it's part of your core remit if someone works on a project and they don't deliver in a timely manner or they don't get the right outcome from the customer that you work with that scene is not doing the right job it should be the same with uh, completing any of the expense details because you've got the right sort of card you've got responsibilities to uphold so tools like wheel these days the benefits are, yes, we're centralizing it in one place, but yes, we actually also have the tools now to help enforce a culture that is holds collective accountability throughout the organization. Um, on the end user side, absolutely. No one wants to be out of pocket. You're going to have happier staff. Um, they're going to be able to provide you all the, the details at the point of purchase. So 
they don't have to to flop around and and you know get those details at, at the drop of a hat. They can just continually feed it through. The benefits that we might start to see from this this all in one financial stack. Um, moving to the next section, um, reimbursements. Look, another really good example of where we can condense um, and make it easy for staff. What are some of the problems that I see with reimbursements? You know, typically, if, if staff don't have an easy avenue, one, they might misallocate and we need to go back and forth and fix it up. Two, they might just hold on receipts and, and expenses until they exit the organisation and they just store up and then, bang, it's a, it's a lot of cash out the door. Um, three, if we make it difficult for staff, potentially they're not going to stay as long. And as we all know, staff retention as well is, is very important these days to make sure we don't have outflows of knowledge. We don't have to spend money re, you know, retraining new, new hires or even pay them at a higher rate than we had uh, previous staff members at. Um, so reimbursements, huge tool. Um, in fact, one of my customers that I worked with, they used the combination of approvals and reimbursements and cards and reimbursements was, was one of their favourites. They weren't happy that they had to pay out reimbursements more frequently, but they were happy that it was coming through and staff were happier and they didn't have these build-ups of, of claims throughout the year. Um, moving into the, the next slide, subscription management. Look, with the traditional systems, again, it might be Excel, it might be something else. They were adequate at the time. Um, but subscription management paired with a payment source, you really had a couple of um, you're at a couple of disadvantages. As I mentioned before, if fraud hits the one card that you run all your subscriptions through, that card could get cancelled at any moment without your knowledge, and you could have disruptions to all the services that you pay through that payment source. How do we treat it on wheel? You can actually set up individual payment cards for each of those subscription subscriptions that you hold, um, set that up as the billing details, um, put predetermined limits on how much could be charged on that card based off the cadence. It could be a month, it could be an annual limit um, and view that from one spot. So again, we're able to, to manage the subscriptions by seeing them in one place. We're able to set up the payments and we're able to mitigate any chances of, of fraud affecting the business's productivity because no one wants to sit there and have to re-enter card details um, 20 times. You know, we'll do it once, forget about it. So again, thinking about your reimbursements and your cards with the subscription management, we're starting to see a condensing factor. We don't have to jump into four or five different platforms at the moment. We're just doing it from the one place, which means I've got a one-stop shop. While I'm in here checking the budgets, I'm checking the approvals, I'm checking the reimbursements, let's just check in the subscriptions. Do we need to set anything up? Moving into uh, the next um, section of bills. Look, I come from a, a background of understanding the AP process quite well. I can understand that there can be a lot of back and forth um, and it's really easy to get by. Now, with Wheel, what I'd like to say is it's like a traditional um, bill capture tool but with your bank built on top of it. How powerful is that? Um, we've got our approvals in there, so it can go through two steps of approval. If it's me uploading and it's for a specific amount, I can send it to a particular individual. Um, you know, if I was to set it up and send through my invoice, it might go through the head of the business unit and then go into the member of the finance team at that dollar mark. Um, if it's over $1,000, we can send it to two particular individuals. But what are we able to do? Um, we can upload them, extract the details, uh, track the spend, feed that into your accounting software. Um, this quarter, we're actually able to import bills from zero. So if really the only, the only problem that you, you're facing is the batch payment issue, we can solve that through through uploading the bills and importing them through through zero. So again, where are we thinking about it? Now we've got all of our processes from an outflow function, or the majority of them, 
starting to feed into the one spot, which means one account balance. It means one bank account to reconcile um, with all the information and source documents that we need collected very easily. So moving from there, This is my favorite part. It's time to play bingo. So thanks, Jesse, for taking us through that. We, with all of that said, I guess some questions to kind of reflect on um, whether it is potentially time to, to think about updating your toolkit. Um, I think we've got a little poll going live. Yeah. Um, so if you take yes to any of, sorry, yeah, let us know, I guess, whether you have any of these on your bingo cards. And then we do have a little surprise for you on the next slide, depending on how you tick. <laughs> so we'll leave that open for a few minutes longer. So we have, I don't have an integrated spend management solution. I have overlap in my tech stack. So maybe you've got a few tools that are um, have the same capability across them and you're, you're kind of spreading, um, yeah, have that overlap across your tools. Um, your tech tools don't send data to your core system. So whether that's your accounting software or your key reporting software, um, there are aspects of the process that you're still completing manually. So maybe it kind of gets halfway there, but you still got to jump in and, and move things along or, or put in checks and balances or carry data from one tool to another um, manually. And the last is that you, you potentially don't have visibility over every dollar that's been in your business. So maybe you've got um, some spend that's happening and um, bank statements or with shared cards that you're, you're not across. Cool. So move on to the next slide. So if you hit bingo by answering yes to one or more of these questions, we would love to buy you a coffee. So if you scan that QR code that you see on the screen now um, and enter your details, we will send you a $10 card. Now we call it a coffee card put it towards a beer, put it towards a Chrissy present, um, whatever you want to, we will send that that um, gift card out to you tomorrow. It's just a, a, um, a MasterCard card so you can spend it wherever you want. Um, but yeah, we'll send that through to you tomorrow with some details on how to set it up and add it to your Apple wallet so you can make a purchase of your choice for winning bingo. And... Cool. If you didn't get a chance to scan or it didn't work for whatever reason, um, just let me know. We can send it to you separately. And that takes us through to Q&A. So we haven't we've had a few questions answered privately through as we've been talking. Um, but if you did have any other questions that you wanted to throw to Jesse or myself or um, whether it's about tech stack recommendations, about wheel, about anything we've chatted through today, Pop it in the Q&A. We'll give that a few seconds for anything else to come through. Um, otherwise, we've had a few specific ones that we will cover off um, privately as well through email. But, okay. Yeah, well, there's a few that we'll answer privately. But um, other than that, that takes us to the end of our session today. Um, we thank you everyone for joining. I think we've got one more poll. I know we have focused on wheel today as, as we sort of said, um, oh, wait, we do have one question. Oh, sorry. I'll just answer this one. Is there an intention to allow for supplier management via wheel, i.e. input of correct business names, linking with existing contacts, input of correct invoice number? Jesse, good news. <laughs> the good news is that it's here this quarter. We have been focusing on bills. Um, we are allowing uh, the ability to save supply details, BSBs, account numbers, to give you a bit of control and reduce the risk associated with paying those suppliers. So absolutely, it's exciting this quarter. I know, Katie, you've worked a fair bit on that as well. Yeah, it's been great. We've had so much good feedback. We know it's something a lot of our customers have been chomping at the bit for, so great to be able to deliver that. Um, and just make that bills a bit easier um, within the wheel product. I think that's that's all for questions today. Um, so we might wrap there, but we thank you everyone for joining. Um, it's been great to chat today. Thank you, Jesse, for taking us through that. It's always lovely to hear your expertise. Um, 
And yeah, that takes us to the end. Thank you everyone for joining. Cheers.